What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Show. In early 2012, hardware developer Ikari01 produced the SD to SNES in collaboration with Crix, much to the acclaim of many Super Nintendo enthusiasts. It's been 10 years since the project began, and it continues to receive updates to its feature set, allowing it to maintain its dominance in the flash card arena. Alongside these updates, it also received a name rebranding from SD to SNES to FX Pack in order to avoid licensing issues. This rebrand coincided with an update to the FPGA and PCB, allowing for better future proofing and greater potential for fun and interesting hacks. In this video, I will walk you through the process of getting your SD to SNES or FX Pack Pro updated for 2021 and beyond. I'll also give you some simple tips to get you started after installation. Link to the tools used in the description below. Before we get started, I would like to mention that the updating process is the same between the classic SD2 SNES and the FX Pack Pro. The feature set is also mostly the same, with the SD2 SNES not being able to take advantage of the MSU1 support for SA1 games. Regardless of this, you can rest assured that if you have an older SD2 SNES card, you'll gain the majority of the benefits that have been added up until today. Getting started, you'll want to make sure that you have a large enough SD card to hold all of your games. I recommend an SD card that is 64GB or more. In this example, I use a card that is 128GB. This will allow you to get a full set of SNES ROMs, along with a number of MSU1 games that you might be interested in having. The card will need to be formatted as FAT32. If you are using an SD card that is larger than 32 gigabytes, you'll need to use a formatter tool. As usual, I recommend that you use FAT32 format. Download the tool, then format the SD card, renaming it something that you can remember. In this example, I named it SD to SNES. With the SD card taken care of, head to the Project SD to SNES site for the newest firmware. Scroll down just a bit on the page, then click on the link below to download the firmware. Extract the contents of the zip onto the root of the SD card making sure that the SD to SNES folder is preserved. In order to play enhancement chip games, you'll also want to search for and download the .bin files for each chip. Here are the .bin file names and their associated CRC32 values. Once you have obtained these files, move them to the SD to SNES folder on the SD card. Take out the time to fill out the SD card with the games that you have legally obtained. Pop the card back into the console and you'll be good to go. The SD to SNES family of flashcards can play every single Super Nintendo game aside from ST18 and SPC7110 games. 
this includes the ever-popular SA1 and SuperFX games. You can also download and play the custom MSU1 chip games, which can have Redbook audio and even full motion video. If you are interested, I recommend you check out the Zeldix forum for a primer on MSU1 to help you get started. With the beta firmware, support for Super Game Boy and Super Game Boy 2 has also been added. This means that your Super Nintendo of choice now has access to the full Game Boy library, in addition to SNES games. In order to add this to your cart, you'll need additional files. Here are the files required in their associated CRC32 values. Once you've obtained these files, drag them over to the SD to SNES folder on the SD card. Separate from the inherent Super Game Boy support, Project Nested is compatible with the SD to SNES, allowing for limited NES gaming. However, each NES game needs to be converted into a .sfc file one at a time. I'll leave a link to the Project Nested GitHub in the description below. Pressing X on the file browser will open up the main menu for the cart. Here you will be allowed to tweak a few settings to better enhance your SD2 SNES experience. Pressing A on system information will give you a readout of various statistics on the SD card. These statistics include the Super CIC, Super Game Boy bin files, as well as the Super Nintendo's master clock. Pressing A on configuration will take you to a host of options. I recommend you select In-Game Settings and enable these options. Reset to Menu, In-Game Hook, and In-Game Buttons. This will allow you to reset your console and enable or disable cheats using your controller. Save State can also be activated under the option known as Save State Settings. Here are the in-game hooks if you have these options turned on. Two of the in-game hooks that I'll point out are both known as Reset Game Hooks. Pressing L, R, Select, and Start during gameplay will do a short reset akin to hitting the reset button on your console. Pressing L, R, Select, and X will do a long reset on the game and take you back to the SD to SNES menu. Under SGB settings, you'll be allowed to tweak the settings for the Super Game Boy, such as adding save states or swapping the BIOS files between Super Game Boy 1 and 2. You can also set the timing of the clock if you would like to have it set to the slightly faster timing of the Super Game Boy, or the slower but more accurate timing of the Super Game Boy 2. Under browser settings, you'll be allowed to hide the file extensions for your games, have the file directories auto-sorted, and tune the LED brightness on your cart. Turning the screensaver on will allow dimming of the file browser during an idle period to better help protect your screen from burning. For games that have save support, saving your game will write a .srm file to your cart. These files will be stored in the sd to snes slash saves folder. As they are .srm files, they can be moved off the card and backed up, or transferred to other compatible carts or emulators. 
With this beta, support for save states has also been added. Keep in mind that this feature is being actively worked on and is limited to games that don't use expansion chips. Pressing Start and R during gameplay will save the state of the game, while pressing Start and L will load the state. There are four separate save slots that can be used, and they are activated by using the in-game button combinations. Pressing select in one of the directional buttons will allow you to pick one of the four slots to save and load your states. The SD to SNES family of cards both have an unconventional cheat system in place that is rarely mentioned. There is no cheat menu as of yet, and you'll need to have the cheat files prepared and downloaded per game to be used. In order to do this, head to the gamehacking.org website. Up in the search bar, type the name of the game that you're interested in getting cheats for, then hit the search. Select the game, then make sure the All option is selected in the next section, then click Download to download your prepared file. This file will be downloaded in .yml format. Grab the file and transfer it to the SD to SNES slash cheats folder. Check out the cheats on the list, replacing the false flag with true for each cheat that you would like to have active. Save the file and you'll be good to pop the SD card back into the cart. Cheats are on permanently unless you turn off the setting in the main menu. You can also use in-game hooks to activate and deactivate cheats mid-game. A cheat menu is planned to be added in the near future. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. What's your favorite Super Nintendo game? Do you have a game on this system that you would like to recommend? Any questions for me concerning this video? Let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, consider dropping a sub or a like. Also, why not check this video out? Peace.